This video is an overview of my COBOL code generation tool. It was built to assist in fast code generation of small projects while eliminating coding errors by constructing a proven foundation code set on demand. This code generator is intended for text-based programs such as what would be run on a Unix platform, either AccuCobol or Microfocus, or a Windows console type program. The code base generator shown here creates a rough skeleton that can be compiled and sent to production in a short amount of time, although there are additional features that will be discussed in later presentations. This tool is available for download free of charge, and a download link is provided in the description. All that we ask is that you click the like button, and please subscribe to the channel so that we get support to make other tools through revenue from advertisers on YouTube. If you want to receive notifications when future videos are posted, click the notifications bell so that you will be notified on future updates to the channel. Thank you in advance for your support, and let's get into the product. What you see here is the main window of the code generator. Up at the top left is where the source code output will reside after the build is performed. Below that is the copybook output, although it will not be used in this particular demonstration. Both outputs, as you can see, are browsable and are saved as defaults once the build takes place. Below that is the text box where the source code output is displayed. This is intended for display purposes while designing the screens, though small changes can take place within the text box after the design phase. Over on the upper right is the identification division entry fields for program ID, author, date written, and COBOL type. The purpose of the COBOL type is to select the COBOL that will be used to compile the output. The reason for this is that there are slight differences in behavior between Microfocus COBOL and AccuCOBOL. You can create an AccuCobol or Microfocus text program, or have the option to create an AccuCobol program that uses GUI screens, though there are more advanced code generators that are also available for that type of program. To show you one example of a difference between AccuCobol and Microfocus, let me scroll down to the field attributes definition. Notice the field attributes in the code. This is how AccuCobol defines field attributes. Now I'm going to select Microfocus. Now this is how Microfocus defines attributes. And there are also other slight differences, which is why the COBOL type option is available. Below that is the screen section where I will be spending a bit of time during this presentation. This is where the developer has the option to add, edit, and delete screen designs. Below that, which I will not be covering in this particular demonstration, is the external build tools. I have incorporated a means of adding additional functionality to this tool set that will, for lack of a better term, add a bit of polymorphism to the design tool. These external options will be including, but not limited to, report writing, CSV file import and export, building a complete maintenance module program directly from a copybook import, a complete maintenance module designed directly from a SQL table, as well as a variety of data migration options. But for this demonstration, I will just be covering the screen design feature of the COBOL code generator. So with that, let's create a screen. To do this, you click the Add button, specify a screen name, and from here you start designing the screen within the black console area which will represent your display area in the compiled program. To add a literal, you just right click in the screen the console area. To add a literal, simply add something in the value text box. And either click the OK button or press Enter. 
Now to reposition this literal, all you have to do is place your mouse over the literal, left click and hold the literal, and then use the mouse to position it wherever you want it to go. So I'm going to try to center it as good as I can. To add a field, it's the same process where you right click in the console area. And instead of adding a literal in the value text box, I'm going to add something up in the field name. I'm going to call it date field. I'm going to give it a length of 10. Press OK. You can decide whether it's a read-only field, like data comes in, data goes out, or both. Click OK. And now I have a field here that I can move wherever I want it. If I decide I don't want something on the screen, I can simply go down to the list view below, click the field that I want to get rid of, and then simply press the delete key, and the field's gone. One of the other features is the easy screen function, which allows you to add a literal and a field at the same time. For demonstration purposes, what I'm going to do is simulate an address scenario. So I'm going to add last name, first name, street, city, state, and zip code. So last name, I'm going to give it a length of 20. First name, I'll move it down a little lower. Street, 35. I'm going to do city for length of 20, state for 2, and then zip code. I'm going to do a numeric value. Zero suppressed for five digits. So I'm going to add a five-digit zip code. And then I'm going to click done. And then from here, I can just simply move the items where I want them to be positioned on the screen. So I'm going to move these around. And now I have completely designed a screen. So I'm going to click Done. And it shows that I have a screen there. And now you can notice in the um, edit box that I now have all of the working storage for the screen that I just designed. I also have the screen section code for the screen layout. And I have all of the code necessary to display the screen and some uh, commented code that you can add additional functionality um, later, but this is just to just lay the screens out is sort of a foundational um, skeleton build here. And then down in the screen display, there's uh, you have an initialize, you have the set fields functions and moves from working storage to the screen fields. You have your display loop, and then you get the fields from the screen back to the working storage as needed. And I've added all of the validation logic as well. So we have required fields for last name, first name, have all the cursor positioning taken care of, which will be evident when I compile the program and, and run it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit build, and then we're going to go ahead and compile the program. So let's see if our one screen program works. I'm going to drag this file over to my homegrown COBOL editor and release it, which is going to open the program. And I'm going to simply compile it and then run it in debug. So it's running the Aki COBOL debugger right now. I'm going to hit G for go. And as you can see, the screen is being displayed exactly how I designed it and all of the edit validation is working. And it works
works just fine. So I'm going to make just a very simple modification. So I'm going to open up the evaluate statement. Open up function key 2, and I'm going to create that paragraph. So you compile it again, and I'm going to run it. Now if I hit F2, it's going to run that code that I just added, which says F2 was pressed. This concludes the video. If you want to see more videos like this, please click the subscribe button and click the notifications bell below to see more videos like this when they're posted. Thank you so much and have a great day.